What's up guys? Uh, five pieces from unit three that I want to go over and I can get out to you so you can add this stuff, some of the stuff in your notes. Uh, the first piece is a screen, the siege of Belgrade and the hunting scene. Uh, this is what they call a biombo. That word comes from Japan, which was famous and kind of invented these folding screens. You know, you guys have probably seen these before. People change behind them and, and stuff before. They're kind of a, a traditional kind of screen that, you know, instead of going into the closet or something like that to change or do something like that, you, you have these decorative screens. This particular piece has two images. It has a battle siege on one side and it has a hunting scene on the other one. Uh, it's painted with oil and it has a shell inlay. So these shells would pick up light and highlight certain pieces of this biombo that you would see. Now, this is a piece that was found in Mexico. So what was going on was there was a, a trade uh, set up and a lot of stuff was coming in from Japan to the Philippines. And at the time, the Philippines were uh, ruled by uh, Spain. So you'd have a trade from Philippines, to Mexico to Spain, and you'd have things like these lacquer boxes, these folding screens and sculptures that would get mixed up in trade. And there was this fascination with people from Spain with a lot of the art that was coming out of Japan. So that's what inspired this Japanese folding screen. Um, it depicts a war between the Hamburg Empire and the Turks. Uh, and the other side is a little bit more elegant than I sign. We'll look at that here in a minute. Uh, it was owned by a viceroy. If you don't know a viceroy, that's a ruler, Spanish ruler. Uh, it shows the Battle of Belgrade, 1688. It's thinly painted. So you get the shells, this thin oil paint on there. And when it's unfolded and light hits in a certain way, certain things are highlighted and the artist try to do that and depict that in this painting. Um, so the way this is probably displayed in a person's of powers or a person of uh, wealth or a person who was powerful, like the Viceroy, the way he would probably display this is when he had guests, he would show his power by showing the siege part, the war part, the part we're looking at now, it's got all the chaotic scenes on there because that would obviously make him look like a powerful person. Uh, probably when he was alone, you would probably see this bottom right-hand side more often, which is elegantly painted. Um, more of a hunting scene, an everyday common scene that uh, would take place in this culture and in this society. Um, very interesting piece. The top, very eloquently done. You've got these uh, kind of like columns up there. Uh, I mentioned lacquer boxes, the bottom post to hold this thing, holds this thing up. Looks like it's got that lacquer post kind of feel that black lacquer that was, it was uh, heavily influenced by Japanese art at the time. Uh, anyway, folding screen, transportable, uh, Japanese influenced, these screens were invented in, in a big deal in Japanese art, and here they are in uh, Spanish Baroque art. Uh, you can see the influence of trade and in this work. All right, next piece, there's a video on there you can click on and if you want to look at it. It's Fruit and Insects by Rachel Roosh, which is very nice because now we have a woman artist. We haven't talked about a woman artist in quite some time. Uh, this painting is kind of a, a change from what we've seen in the past. It's, you know, we've seen a lot of religious paintings, things pay, painted uh, or sacred. We haven't seen very, very sec secular things. So uh, Rachel here was a female artist and she came from a wealthy family. Her father was a scientist and they're very involved in the paint, the, the arts and in painting and in sculpture. Um, one thing that's very different about this painting is it's something that's kind of common, but yet still kind of relates to the wealthy. We talked before about you know, having be able to attain food and good food and fruit and stuff like that. We even talked about that in our Orphanity portrait that 
uh, fruit is not something that everybody could afford during this time period. Uh, so she's betraying fruit, uh, but however, there's not a lot of sacred things, symbolism going on here. What's going on is you've seen a shift from painting to painting common everyday things like still lifes, portraits, landscapes. And here we have a still life. Uh, she kind of captures the natural beauty of all these objects. You've got a butterfly, it looks like it's ready to land somewhere. These fruits, you know, they've got highlights on them. Uh, it's a very natural setting. Uh, one thing that's interesting is the detail in here is very, it's very detailed, little small details. Her father was a scientist and at this time, during the time period, his interest in science, the microscope was perfected. So being that her father was a scientist, he probably used a microscope, she might have used a microscope so she could really zoom in on what these objects really look like in real life and, and capture that in paint. Um, it's oil paint, it's got uh, very vibrant colors, it's very realistic. It's a uh, something that you would look at that would make it desirable for wealthy people, even though it's kind of like little insects on there, uh, still would be desirable for people who want to attain wealth and uh, be able to afford a, uh, a nice still life of fruit like this. However, if you look close enough, some of these things could possibly be symbolic of sacred stuff, grapes, could be symbolic of blood. You've got wheat that could be symbolic of the bread. So you've got some things that maybe could possibly still kind of hint around the sacred art that we uh, have been talking about during this time period. Uh, check out the video, pretty interesting stuff. And it's also nice to uh, start seeing some female artists here and also to see some different kinds of artwork as you kind of, we're gonna start seeing more still lives, landscapes, more natural things that uh, most common people can relate to. All right, here's a little uh, interesting painting. Spaniard and Indian produced a mestizo attributed to Juan Rodriguez Juarez, oil on canvas, okay? This is also a Baroque painting. Uh, what you have here is a Spanish father, an indigenous mother, and son. It's part of a series uh, that documents the inner ethnic mixing in New Spain with Europe's indigenous people and people of uh, the African culture. Okay, so it's about kind of like a melting pot of people and the mixing of races that went on uh, with all these people from different cultures. It's a Costa painting. Uh, a Costa painting attempts to capture reality. However, the stories are, are, are fiction. Um, so I mean, it's pretty, if you look close enough, you can pretty much tell kind of what it's about. I'm sure that some topics like this might have been kind of uh, racy for the times, maybe a little bit tabooish a little bit, but we've seen you know, a little bit of some tabooish artwork already during this unit. Uh, but it also speaks to the nature of what time was like back then as far as you know, what kind of cultures that people were mixing together and, and you know, the relations people were having and, and the relationships people had toward one another and, and the way that the status uh, setup was for the society. Uh, again, it's a series, so you would see several of these. Sometimes you would see 16 different images. Uh, this is not the only artwork where it's just part of the series, but usually these stories tell some kind of narrative or represent some kind of narrative or some kind of story uh, of the culture of people that were around at this time. Also could be modeled maybe roughly off the Holy Family. You know, you got the, uh, you know, Joseph, Mary, and, and the baby there, you know, possibly could be something like that. It looks very similar to that uh, holy kind of triangle that we've talked about uh, a few times in this unit. All right, and there's a nice video that goes with it. Shows you the different uh, kind of common everyday things that goes on with these Costa paintings. These paintings, these paintings like this, a document that has several panels back and forth. They're kind of like uh, kind of like early comic book or storyboards. You know, they tell different stories, even though they they might be uh, might not always be true or realistic. 
They tend to be realistic and represent things that we see all the time. All right, here's another uh, fun one. Master of Kala, Marka, Angel with Arca, Arcabus. Okay, this is another oil painting. It's a royalty painting. Okay, somebody's obviously wealthy. This painting has a lot of different things going on. It's a very kind of a neat combination of things. It's from Peru, Brazil. Uh, it's from a very, very rich area uh, where there's the, I guess supposedly the, the richest silver deposits in the world are found there. It's where the Inca Empire was. Uh, there's a rich history of clinical painting, of colonial painting schools that uh, existed during this time and in this area. So a lot of people were trained in these colonial style paintings. Paintings where uh, people had firearms and stuff. So these schools were all over the place. Uh, the school likes to depict elaborate clothing. You know, this is a, a very fashionable person, woman, uh, doing an everyday event. Okay, it's part of the Baroque art period. So kind of, you know, the later Renaissance into the Baroque period. This, uh, these schools, often what would happen is some of these people would be trained to paint different things, like somebody would specialize in painting hands, somebody would specialize in painting the face, Somebody would do the, the fashion or the clothing. So some of these paintings, including this one, was actually painted by various people. It was almost like an assembly line. Uh, this, this woman, this, this female character is actually an angel. There's, a, there's wings back there. If you haven't seen that, uh, it's got an elaborate hat, elaborate clothing. Uh, it's an angel with a gun. So we've seen angels before kind of with, you know, some kind of arms and armor, uh, fighting, defending. Uh, this one's a little bit different in the way that it's dressed. It's, uh, it's almost like a fashion show, the way they're standing, the elaborate outfit, you know, it's so big and so bulky and, and drapes down. It's got all this, you know, intricate detail going on there. The hat's very big and very bold and stands out. So this is a quite common, common attire for that time. Uh, very fashionable. Uh, that outfit represents Inca royalty, uh, the Inca empire, which is the largest empire in the uh, Colombia American. It connects religion with the angel, political power with the outfit, and the story behind these paintings and these characters are, are these angels were sent down to protect the Catholic church. Okay, so they're defenders. Uh, very well dressed uh, angel defenders. So that's the story behind that painting. And this last scandalous painting, the TT a TT from Marriage a la Mode by William Hogarth. Hogarth's kind of a, a humorous character. Uh, these paintings kind of make fun of aristocrats. Uh, again, this is a series of paintings, okay? There's six different stories, uh, six screens are all connected. Uh, we're at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. So you're starting to get art that's made available for the middle class a little bit. Uh, it wasn't just about people of wealth commissioning to have things done or churches commissioning to have artwork done. Now you're starting to have artwork that's available to the middle class. Uh, and the printing press was a big part of that. Uh, Hogarth was actually more of a printmaker as opposed to a painter. He would create a painting and then from that he would copy it, make uh, prints off of it, and then he would uh, sell those because prints were a lot cheaper than paintings to sell. So a lot of these ideas and these paintings and these prints that he created actually made fun of aristocrats. Um, Marriage a la mode actually means modern uh, painting, uh, marriage, like a marriage of the day. So he's commenting on people marrying for money, okay, or arranged marriage. And the characters in here are called the squander fields because they have squandered their fortune from people. Uh, there's a six panels. Each one tells a story 
uh, the top left, and the, the guy on the right holding his family tree. Uh, he's the one making the deal with his lawyer and his other merchant. What's happening is in order to build this building in the background and to kind of keep his, uh, you know, his fortune above water and do all the things he wants to do. He needs more money. So he's reached out to a wealthy merchant for money. And what he's done is he's offered his son to marry this merchant's daughter, uh, saying that, you know, she will become a part of this, this family tree of, of wealth and this lineage of, you know, being a wealthy and powerful person. In the painting, his son looks very uninterested. On the far left, I'm talking about this left-hand panel up here. The daughter looks like she's about to cry. She's actually being consoled by this guy called Silver Tongue, which, you know, even the name Squander Fields, Silver Tongue, is making fun of these uh, wealthy people. Uh, I really like this painting just because it's humorous. Uh, it's almost like a modern day TV show or reality show or something, uh, you know, that we see today. It's pretty much all garbage anyhow, but anyway, that's my personal opinion, doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, but this is kind of a funny, humorous thing, making fun of people. Uh, you know, it would may also make it a lot more appealing to the middle class who would want to make, you know, fun of people who are above them, wealthier than them. You can buy, you know, some of these paintings or this these prints, uh, have them in your house and, and have a good laugh. So, uh, that's what this artwork's about. Watch the video. it has got like a nice, a lot of nice symbolism in it. Uh, this part right here is actually just one of the six. And the story behind it is this is the son. This is after they've been married. This guy right here on the left, who's kind of looking away, like he's just in disbelief, like I can't do anything with these people. He's in charge of their finances. And uh, he just looks a little bit upset because it's like he can't tell them either anything. It's obviously they don't love one another. They married each other for the money and for the, the title of being a, you know, a wealthy person and for power. And it's like an arranged marriage. The guy's just coming back and they, the story behind it is he's probably been out all night long gambling and, you know, doing things that some guys like to do out all night long, chasing women and probably drinking. And, you know, he's coming back and his dog's kind of sniffing his jacket like, you know, it's a funny smell. Where have you been? And he's kind of like, you know, I just got back, I'm exhausted. Her, the woman on the other hand, looks like she might have like a little rendezvous going on herself. She's kind of sitting back there, looks nice and relaxed. Uh, you know, if you look at a close up of the painting, her top's a little bit undone. She's got her feet kind of kicked out a little bit. The house is a little bit of a mess, chairs knocked over. There's a musical instrument here, there's musical notes down here. Like somebody was listening to music, maybe dancing, having a good time, there's stuff all over the place. Uh, in the background, you kind of got this, you know, this is all bad going on here. There's arranged marriage. They don't love one another. They're probably out cheating on one another. This guy, you know, can't help them with their finances because they just don't care about it. And then this other room back here, you've got all these paintings back here on the wall of saints, which is, uh, you know, you got kind of like this good and bad thing going on. There's a little allegory still kind of going on um, in the background. So anyway, that's that. Uh, Hope you guys listen to these videos. I've attached some of the videos. I hope you can get to them on the slides. If not, let me know. Uh, check out these five pieces yourself. Uh, supplement your notes with them. And I'll see you in class. Have a good day.